Hi, Chris Wallace from Second Swing. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona today at Ping headquarters. We've got Marty Jertson with us. Marty, we want to offer you congratulations. You just <laughs> qualified for the 2018 PGA Championship yeah. at Belle Reve Country Club in the St. Louis area by finishing in the top 20 at the Club Professionals Championship. Outstanding accomplishment. I think this is the third time you qualified, is that yeah, right? Yeah, third time, and, but uh, I haven't played since 2012. Uh, when it was at Kiowa, and uh, my game is very different now, so I'm, I'm very excited to get another crack at it. And this was really an awesome performance by you. The last round, for people who may not see it, was on Golf Channel. Cool, breezy conditions. You shot 68, uh, which was either low round of the day or second low round of the day, and I was following it online because I knew a couple other guys, including you playing. You had bogeyed 15 to fall out of the cut line, yeah. Then birdie 16, 17, yeah. 18, quite a finish. Yeah, I was a little uh, steamy, I guess you <laughs> could say, on the 16th tee. But I, you know, I had to make the decision, you know, are you going to eject out of the tournament or try to harness that frustration and to do something good? And, and I was able to do that, fortunately. And a little bit of luck mixed in there. But the three putt on uh, 15, um, it was the toughest pin of the week. You know, a lot of slope. I kind of do the aim point stuff. So it was on a, like a two percent slope where the pin was I was I had a, about a 20 footer for birdie and I was in aggressive mindset I was obviously playing good and rolled about five or six feet by and it was kind of the only short putt I missed the whole the whole week but it hit some great shots on 16 very precise with my yardages and trajectory uh, and 17 to about 15 and 10 feet made both of those putts with my uh, catch putter that, <laughs> that I love and then I hit a great, I had to hit the fairway on 18. It was a, it was a reachable par five. They had the tee up a little bit into the ocean breeze though. And I had to hit the fairway. And uh, my max driver came through for me and uh, put one in the fairway. And it, it, at that point, it didn't virtually guarantee a birdie, but I was able to uh, use one of my new I-500 long irons and get it up there by the green and, and uh, have an easy birdie. Yeah, and at the time, it looked like that birdie might be the difference between maybe being in a playoff or being in safe. Yeah. And when Golf Channel came on the air, the first thing they showed was you actually lifting out an eagle putt and then having to tap in for birdie. Yeah, so that, that, if that eagle putt would have gone in, it would have been really fun to w walk off because the putt kind of hit the pin. I left the pin in on purpose, and it kind of hit the pin and went maybe a foot or two feet, a uh, foot or two by the hole. Yeah. And, it, and uh, even on that one or two footer, I'm not going to lie, I was, I was uh, a little nervy. <laughs> but, Absolutely, uh, yeah, a lot on got, the line. Once I got in the hole, just it's uh, the emotions, all the emotions from the week, and a long week, especially for someone like me coming from the office, who's, yeah. this is my only four round tournament I'll play all year. I mean, besides the PGA Championship coming up, just a huge relief and, a, and then a lot of excitement and have my family there. It was, it was a lot of fun, Chris. Yeah, and it's a unique situation for you as the director of product development here. This is your bag. You're actually designing, building these clubs. So we thought it'd be neat to take our audience through and show them kind of what you played to qualify. Yeah. And then maybe talk about what changes you may make as a better player going into Bell Reef. Yeah, that's a good question. And I made a lot of changes uh, for uh, both Kiowa that I played in uh, the year before in Atlanta. I played a five wood. I think everyone knows Atlanta Athletic Club has this a couple of real long par threes. The 15th is this downhill 240, 250 hole. The one David Toms made the hole in one a long time mm -hmm. ago. And I put a five wood in just for that hole. Then Kiowa was super windy. And so I put a three iron in for that course. So I, I need to do my homework on Bell Reeve and, and take a look at what the best kind of option is. Uh, from a long iron standpoint, but yeah, I'd love to just kind of walk through my bag. Yeah. So uh, G400 Max driver, and what I really love about this, I, I'm hitting my driver with the most efficiency now at age 37 than I've ever hit it. And what I mean by that is that five years ago, I used to launch it about 10 or 11 degrees with 2800, 2700 spin, and a little bit of technique, but a lot, but a lot also the driver. And so now with the Max driver, the CG being so deep. I'm launching it at 14 degrees on the golf course with about 2,200 RPM spin. Wow. And that's why I'm excited uh, to get back in another tournament. The driver is the most important club in the bag for the tour players. It's what can really separate you and give you that advantage if you hit it relatively long in a small percent off line. And the max has really helped me do that and get the best l efficiency and launch conditions. And you're further proof that the max has really been an unbelievable product where maybe as it was coming to market, people were thinking game improvement, but 
couldn't be anything further than that. Again, it kind of breaks the mold that you can have straight and long at the same time. And so this driver proves you can have both at the same time. And I've personally really, really enjoyed that. And I play a low spin shaft, uh, hazardous uh, T1100 shaft, mm -hmm. a pretty low spin shaft, so I can play a little bit more loft, get the launch angle with the low spin for that efficiency. This has been the biggest difference in, in my personal bag and my experience uh, over the last four or five years, wow. uh, the Max driver. Good stuff. Uh, yeah, fairway wood, G400. I just play kind of the standard G400 three wood. Uh, in the dot position, uh, okay. very high ball speed, so I'm hitting this further than any three wood. Again, for I've kind of maybe lost a little my natural clubhead speed over the last five years ago or so, but I'm hitting again my three wood just as far further than I've ever hit it. Um, so that's been great. Um, high, I typically play a hybrid, so a three hybrid, okay. uh, G400. Um, nothing special about it either per se. Um, and uh, hit this club about 240 yards, 235 to 240 with a lot of versatility. Yeah. And so this club I may or may not use at Bell Reeve, kind of need to check out the course, may add a seven wood or a five wood depending on the par threes, the wind, and whether I need something to dig it out of the rough or not. And then going into the irons. Yeah, so these I added at the, <laughs> at the PGA Professional Championship, the I-500. Why did I add these? Now, long iron play is where I am the weakest relative to the tour player. So uh, this would be called, uh, there's some statisticians that call this the danger zone play, okay. where you're more likely to make a bogey than a birdie, right? So if I'm at 220 yards and I'm hitting a shot next to Tony Finau or Bubba Watson, those guys are hitting uh, five, six, seven irons and they're hitting it close to the hole. I'm trying my best to <laughs> eke every ounce out of a four iron and get it in the air and throw my head back and release <laughs> it and do all the stuff to get it high. I just don't have their speed and their talent and their skills. This makes me, turns me into a below average, bottom 10th or 20th percentile on the tour, probably into now an average tour player, long iron player, wow, maybe okay. even above average, because these go 10 yards, 15 yards further, and they go 10% higher. So the average uh, player can sense about a two or 3% difference in trajectory. These go 10% higher. So th they just go so towering, I'm hitting them way further. They have way more practical forgiveness because of that, because the face flexes so much. Um, and uh, they, were, they were phenomenal out for me in Monterey, and I'm super, again, excited to have this technological advantage over some of the competition. Yeah. It's, it's really gonna, gonna help me out. Uh, then eye blades, I've been using these for a while. These are workhorse. Uh, they give me that small, workable, good from the rough, extremely precise, uh, plenty of height for a blade style iron, really good feel. And I'm able to just hit shots with a lot of precision. And that's what helped me out there those last couple holes, those last couple birdies I made. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my yardage and trying to figure out my carry distances down to the nearest one yard. Right. And I was able to execute some of that with my eight iron and nine iron on 16 and 17. And then in the wedges, you got glide 2.0 looks like. Yeah, so gapping is very important. So I have a, a eye blade pitching wedge. I have a glide 2.050. Then what I do is I play the glide 2.056 wide sole. Okay. I take pretty big divots uh, in, with my wedges. So this is a really good fitting uh, uh, optimization f for me that I work with our fitters on is to play the wide sole. It's one, I bent it to 55 degrees, so it took one degree of bounce off it. Okay. But I really enjoy the sole width in the 56 degree because I take big divots just with my technique and wedges. Gotcha. So that helps me capture the ball, give me some forgiveness. Then I play the 60 uh, SS with our little heel grind and trailing edge grind. And for me, I play this at 61 degrees. I played a little lighter swing weight to help me just with a little feel, better feel around mm -hmm. the greens, kind of like uh, Bubba Watson does that as well. Okay. Um, and I can spin this a lot. So one of the fun things for me with a 60 is it's not uh, rare for me to get 13,000 RPM spin on a full shot with a 60. And that's just tons of spin yeah. and that I get from the face design. And you mentioned your buddy, the catch. Yeah, <laughs> so the catch, and, and we just, uh, we have the catch now in our Vault 2.0 uh, family as well, and everything about the alignment characteristics that this gives me is phenomenal. So I'm a long putter guy, floated off the chest starting a couple yeah. of years ago. 
Uh, but I love uh, the alignment characteristics and the stability of the catch, and obviously the, the TR face performance. You know, uh, that gives the technological advantage by helping me with touch and reducing three putts. And so it's something everyone out in the marketplace could use just like I do. Yeah. And so going into Bell Reeve, you mentioned probably the one area where you would maybe look would be, could you go three iron, hybrid, or maybe a more lofted fairway? Play? Yeah, exactly. I think, and then kind of figure out gapping with the four and five iron, look at the long par threes. Um, and, uh, but I think the driver's in great shape. The rest of my irons and wedges are in great shape. Putter's in great shape. Just trying to figure out that right mix for that golf course. And it's not too uncommon for uh, uh, tour players to carry a, a three iron, a five or seven wood, and maybe a hybrid, and kind of you know, choose based on the course condition. Of course, yeah. That's great information. Our people at home can learn a lot about setting up a bag. And obviously, congratulations to you. We'll look forward to watching you in St. Louis, and best of luck out there. All right. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Marty. Appreciate it. Okay.